Hi everyone, this is a brief tutorial uh, to show how to use the physical sun and sky in Maya 2014, uh, although it's more or less the same in any version of uh, Maya that you choose to open. And what we're trying to do here is to create some lighting very, very cheaply and very effectively. And you can see what I've got in this shot here is a spider. Um, this is Ra the spider, who is a uh, really nice little spider that's created, uh, it's free for download at Creative Crash. Uh, and also a set that I've imported. Now, if I go to uh, my saved layouts, which is my animation view, which is the uh, shot camera on the right, and I'll just turn on the film gate so uh, we know what the shot camera looks like. And there's my perspective view on the left, standard animator's layout. And if I hit A in the graph editor to get my camera curves, I seem to have a stray curve there. So this is what the camera is doing. Uh, the, the spider is coming towards us down the street and the camera is dollying up uh, and away from the spider. Okay, so far so simple. Um, now what we want to do is we want to light this cheaply and effectively. And because Animation Apprentice is, a, is an animation course, not a lighting course, we want to get quick results for a minimum of effort. And that's where Amaya's Physical Sun and Sky is such a great uh, 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 addition to the animator's toolkit because you can get you can get great results really really fast so the first thing we want to do is go into our render settings up here that's this little two-eyed frog up here uh, so let's open it up and what we want to do is make sure that we're rendering using mental ray because physical sun and sky will only work with mental ray if mental ray is not installed uh, for some reason it does come free with Maya but sometimes it kind of drops out go to window uh, preferences Plugin Manager, Windows Preferences Plugin Manager, click on that and make sure that if you scroll down to Maya2.mlr, there it is there, make sure that it's loaded, make sure auto load is ticked, and then click refresh. I don't need to do it because uh, Mental Ray is already loaded up in my shot. So what I want to do now is go to the indirect lighting tab back in my render settings and instead of, um, well, I'm actually uh, got one here that's left over from before, so I'm just going to delete that. Um, but let's say we want to create a new physical sun and sky, we just simply click Create. Uh, and you can go to Edit Reset Settings, um, uh, or can you? Uh, no, that's something different, but basically make sure that Final Gather is turned off, uh, is, is turned on, um, and your basic uh, render settings should be fine for this shot. So I'm going to go ahead and, and click Physical Sun and Sky, Create. And now what Maya will do is it will create for me a, an automatic Physical Sun and Sky. And if I go into my Outliner, if I go Window Outliner, I'll find my, uh, my set. Um, now this should be, uh, the, I should actually um, uh, group these things together. This is... Um, uh, bad uh, grouping by, or uh, I should, I'm just going to shift select those and go control G. Sorry, let me try that again. Shift select these, go control G. So we've got spider group, I'm going to call that spider group. You always want to make sure that your graph editor is tidy. Spider group like that. Now what you can see, here's our, here's our street group, so that was properly grouped together. You can also see our shot camera there, which is, which is locked off. You always want to lock off your shot camera. If I go into the channel box, you'll see these are all grayed out, and to get that, I went, I drag selected these guys and went right click, lock selected to make sure everything's locked off. And the other thing that you'll see, and this is the new thing, is the sun direction. Now, when uh, Maya creates physical sun and sky, it gives you a sun direction uh, um, uh, directional light. So now, if I want to go and find that in this set here, if I go to Window Outliner and, and make sure it's selected and then hit F uh, and now press W, I can now move this, because um, everything comes in at the origin, I can now move this so that it's it's uh, moving above my set. And I'm just going to move that. So And we can actually make this bigger without affecting its characteristics. It comes in rather small, so why don't we scale this up to 10 just so that we can see it. Uh, it's probably not showing because I haven't got... Uh, lights turned on under my show button so if I just turn on lights there um, okay so we now now we can see it but now it is rather too big so let me set that back to say three okay that's a sensible scale remember this won't affect um, the values at all so now if I lift that above my sh above my shot 
and now do a render, we'll see the effect that this has. So I'm just going to render this now, press pause and let that render. Okay, so Maya's now rendered this out using Mental Ray, and you can see I don't actually have any textures applied to the background here, it's just using the basic Lambert that comes with Maya. Um, but it's created shadows for me and it's lit my shot, and it's giving me a kind of warm, um, uh, high noon kind of feel. And this is the really cool thing about Physical Sun and Sky, where you can see here that it's given me a blue sky automatically, so I don't need any sky material up there. It's the closest thing that Maya has to a make it look awesome button. Uh, but if I now minimize this, and I'll show you what makes this physical sun and sky really so great, is I can now change, the, if I change the angle of that, and I now move it down, I can simulate the effect of dusk. So let's now try rendering that again. Let's go back to our render view. Whoops. And let's now re-render that. And I'll just wait for the result. So there, go, there we go. Suddenly we get a much different light. Now it's not in a particularly good place. It's not actually getting the spider in there. So let me just try that one more time. And I'll minimize that. Uh, go back to my perspective view. And why don't we actually go... Um, I'll go to the panels look through selected to make sure that I'm actually looking at what I think I'm looking. Or will I? So, proving a little bit difficult to dolly this into place. Let's, let's just go back to the perspective view. Okay, just select this. Just want to make sure that we get that light Ah, oh, no, I've selected the wrong thing. So let me go back to Window Outline and make sure I'm selecting the sun direction there. Okay. And let's just move that back over there. And you can, you, you know, you can try... The trick is just to experiment with this uh, until you get something that feels accurate. Uh, or feels attractive. Uh, let's try that. So I'm now going to render that out again. So there we go, that's a much better render. You can see we've got some nice long shadows here suggesting uh, either dawn or dusk. Uh, so that's working pretty nicely. Now you can see we're getting quite a bit of pixelation up here. This isn't particularly attractive. To fix that, you want to go into your render settings uh, go into quality and just up the quality of the render. You can see my my render is set to quite low quality. The more you punch that up, uh, the better the result you'll get here. Now, the great thing about physical sun and sky is it's really quick to do. It's really simple. It kind of gives you lighting for free. And it's a great way to light animation reels uh, because with an animation reel, you don't want to really spend people spend too much time worrying about your lighting. You really want to focus on the animation and the performance. So physical sun, is, uh, sun and sky is a great way of getting a kind of free result for your animation reel.